Welcome to Silicon Valley English's course on public speaking, presenting yourself with confidence. My name is Sunil Modi. Today we're going to cover the basic theory of a presentation, the frame of mind to think about your presentation, and the components of a good presentation. Also, we're going to cover how to get started. I cover the theory behind presentations to help eliminate the fear component. Having an understanding allows you to have proper mindset and frame of reference so you feel more confident and in control. Presentations are really nothing more than a formal explanation of ideas. And there are two main types. Generally either selling something or you're educating the audience. Conceptually, presentations are much like an art form. If you read a book on playing a guitar, it's nowhere near the same as actually playing the guitar. Increasing finger dexterity, coordination, and confidence comes through practice. Presentations, much like art, are experienced by both the speaker and the audience. The good thing about presentations and public speaking is that it's really no different than having a conversation with your friends, with one small exception. The audience will be slightly larger and a little less familiar. Regardless, you're still telling a story and you're still trying to engage the audience. A few common places we see presentations are sales pitches, interviews, company meetings, or weddings. There are four basic components to every presentation. The most important thing in the room in the order of importance is the audience. They are the reason you're giving the speech, then the message, what you're trying to get across, the medium through which the message is delivered, what tools are you using, and finally you, the speaker. The audience will first remember the message, then how that message was delivered, and finally who is delivering the message. In this case, you. You as a speaker are important but only on how you make the presentation itself come to life. The first step in any presentation is to define who our audience is. They are the most important people in the room. Are they peers? Are you giving a presentation about some new findings or a way to deliver goods? Is the audience a customer you're trying to pitch your idea to? The mentality of the audience is generally a me-first attitude. What can you do for me, and why should I care about your presentation? Similar to you watching this video right now, you're hopefully actively thinking, how does this even apply to me? What am I going to get out of this? Understanding the audience's motivation for being there helps shape the delivery method. Always try and relate to the audience. Make the audience think, which keeps them engaged. The easiest way to relate to your audience is to put yourself in their shoes. Ask yourself if your presentation even makes sense. Does it flow? Is it put together in a way that would make sense to you? This is called critical thinking. This is not something that we're all born with right away. It's something that's generally developed, and it takes a lot of practice. For a client, focus on the opportunity and how your product can save them both time and money. What's their issue? What are they trying to solve? Can you be detailed in describing their pain points and how to alleviate them? If it's a boardroom or managers or peers, keep it technical. Focus on the numbers. Focus on the timeline. What would the board want to see? Increased savings? Increased profits? New investment opportunities? Peers or managers may want to see progress on a project and deadlines being met. Maybe you're volunteering for Bring Your Parent to Work Day. Focus on what you do that helps kids. This requires you to put yourself back in your 10-year-old brain and think, what were you curious about at that age? And connect with that thought. The second step. Identify the message. What is it that you want your audience to walk away with? The purpose of a speech or presentation should be stated within the introduction of the speech. For the introduction, ensure that the audience has heard three basic things. Your name, what your credibility is to be able to speak, and the topic you're gonna to speak about. Having a good handle on the time helps your flow while going through the presentation. 10 to 20% for the intro, 60 to 80% for the main talking points, and 10 to 20% for my conclusion. The conclusion, the audience remembers the last thing you said, so summarize your main talking points, reiterate your basic talking points, and end with your message. Stick to one main topic. If you go for more, the audience will get lost. I'm selling networking equipment and sharing my story about my experience as a network engineer. The audience may wonder if this is a sales pitch or a job interview. Three to five talking points to get your point across is more than enough. More than that, and the audience will have trouble keeping track of what you're talking about and likely zone out due to information overload. The third component is the medium through which the message is delivered. Most common today is a PowerPoint. Whiteboards are another really common tool to use as well. They make transitions and visuals very easy, and most people are visual learners. For formal speeches or weddings, commencements, things like that, places where you might be stuck behind a podium, get used to your voice, get used to using gestures, big hand motions. Finally, the last component of your presentation is you. 
You're incredibly important and a vital component to the presentation because you do what no one else can do. You're the artist, the conductor, the MC. Giving a presentation is an art form. You breathe life into your presentation. Your message is remembered by how enthusiastic, passionate, and proud you are of your work. You put a lot of time into this. Make sure the audience understands that and make sure you give it the energy it deserves. Having the opportunity to speak and have people pay attention is a powerful position to be in. Why is the theory important? Because it helps you frame your presentation in a way that will engage the audience. So how do we engage the audience? By using eye contact, body language, and getting feedback. Now we've all seen bad speakers, and we might not be able to nail down exactly what it was that made them bad, but here's a short list. They care about their own message, they don't engage with the audience, they have really poor eye contact, they generally read from their slides, and haven't thought about the topic at all, and they probably haven't even introduced themselves or given themselves credibility to why they're speaking to you. Now, we've covered basic topics and components of a presentation. Let's go over how to start one. I'm a big fan of outlining. I'm hoping this was a concept that you were taught in school, and if you were, you probably like me and didn't like it, because you just didn't really see the point. Well, there is a point, and it's a really good one. Without having an outline, it's basically like driving around town without knowing where you're going. Aimlessly driving might be fun for you, but if your partner and kids are in the car, also known as your audience, they may have somewhere to be, and they might get annoyed really, really easily. Chances are, after enough aimless driving, they'll just get out at the next stop and find another way to get to wherever they need to go. Don't bore your audience. At the bare minimum, you have an idea or concept of what you want to present. Start by just writing it out. I want to present on... Once you've written it out, ask yourself, if you were sitting in the audience, how would you want to hear about this topic? And there are typically two approaches to this part. Either you're trying to sell something, solve a problem, or you're simply educating the audience. If we have a problem to solve, or if we're selling a solution, first and foremost, identify the problem and why it's a problem. How the problem occurred, what the impact of the problem is, if not addressed, and finally, how to solve the problem so it doesn't happen again. I used to sell computer networks, and typically, my presentation would start off with the market analysis. I would identify the segments of the market where the product was best suited address the gaps in the vertical that can't access this market, show why our product was best suited for that market, what margins they could safely expect, and finally how the customer could streamline their ordering and fulfillment process by using our product. For the purposes of educating an audience on something we're passionate about, I take the approach of a story. People find information and facts easier to digest and remember if there's a central character to relate to. Those were two really simple ways to show the difference between solving a problem and selling and educating. We want to spoon feed the audience as much as possible so they can retain the entire experience. Quick note, if you're having trouble coming up with ideas as an audience member, you've got your concept written down, so now you can do some research. Find out how other people have presented similar material. This should help generate a few key talking points. Don't plagiarize it. I talked about that in a different video. Presentations have a general flow, and that flow is typically a formal introduction, the main talking points, and finally the conclusion. This is how you deliver your presentation. But in the process of constructing your presentation, once you have your outline done and your main talking points identified, start by actually building out the body of your presentation first. This will allow you to see the tone you take during your presentation. Tone is very important because it's how you will engage your audience. Are you talking about a very serious topic like saving lives? Or is this a light topic like planning a birthday party? Then. Form the conclusion. How do you want the audience to actually remember your message? What were you trying to convey? And then, the introduction. Introductions are incredibly important because it sets the tone of your presentation, the body keeps up the tempo of your presentation, and the conclusion makes your message resonate. Today we went over the moving parts in a speech, the audience and the importance of relating to them, the message, your method of delivery, and finally what your role is as the speaker. We also went over how to outline and the basics of putting together a speech and getting started. Again, my name is Sunil Modi, and this is Presenting Yourself with Confidence by Silicon Valley English. If you want more information, please feel free to go to siliconvalleyenglish.net. Thank you very much, and have a great day.